We're inching up on another game day, and what better way is there to mentally prepare yourself for the Carolina Panthers than to watch the black and gold today? Well, I guess you could go get hypnotized and spend the next 10 hours watching game film. I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to watch this show for the next six minutes. And lucky for you, it's up next. Welcome to the Black and Gold Today, sponsored by Cadillac of New Orleans. I'm the only person on the planet who doesn't look thinner wearing black, Jim Derry. As the Saints try to become the first team in the NFL to put a tick mark in the loss column of the Carolina Panthers, the good news is they get to do it in the friendly confines of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. The bad news is they have to find a way to stop the leading candidate for MVP, Cam Newton. Still, the best football player ever to wear black and gold tries to remain as upbeat as possible. And then, in fact, he sort of admonished the media for their negative questioning. How dare us? You guys are asking me questions like, like, you want me to reminisce like the season's over. I mean, the season's not over, you know. Um, these are things we can talk about after the season. Um, but, uh, I mean, I'm disappointed with our record, but can't, can't go back and do anything about it. All we can control is what's in front of us. And I think the, the only thing that will make us feel better is, is winning. I mean, it, it's... You can go out and you can play well, and if you lose, it still stinks, you know? And unfortunately, I mean, call it what you will, there's been some games along the way that, you know, certainly felt like we could have won, uh, maybe improve our situation a little bit, but again, we can't go back and change it. Um, I know this, you know, every game we play feels like it's, you know, um, it's one of those, man, small, small margin for error. You know, we got to go out and we have to play really well and we have to execute really well to give ourselves a chance. And unfortunately, we just haven't done that enough, but we have the guys that can turn that around. So if the guys who can turn it around and are in place, how come the past two and a half games, those guys have been a no-show? Well, however, coming home to the Dome could give the team a much needed spark. And by playing three of the next four in front of the Hoodats, one would have to think they'll play with a bit more emotion and fire. On defense, it'll be the first home game with Dennis Allen as defensive coordinator. And who gets the responsibility of shadowing Newton? Most likely, if they use such a player, it would be Stephon Anthony, who arguably has been the team's best defensive player this season. On offense, Breeze will be on the field for the first time against Carolina this season, and so will be will all everything linebacker Luke Keekley be. Sort of like J.J. Watt last week, Drew will have to know where Keekley is at all times, and the Saints will have to be much better in the running game than they've been the past two weeks. Getting Mark Ingram involved might help, as he has only 14 carries combined against Washington and Houston. In fact, he had just five less receptions over that time frame. And we'll, hit, we'll hear more about J.J. Watt and this Friday's Extra Point coming up after this. What's one of the nicest things that comes with your new Cadillac from Cadillac of New Orleans? Zero percent interest. Get zero percent interest on all new Cadillacs, now at Cadillac of New Orleans. New owners, new attitude on Lime Street and Rye in Metairie. For today's Extra Point, it's an in case you missed it kind of day. Earlier this week, Inside the NFL ran a clip of J.J. Watt mixing it up, mic'd up during Sunday's game against the Saints. As he made his way toward Drew Brees all afternoon, he said all sorts of interesting things. The most interesting one was including, you guys need a new right tackle. Well, whether or not that's true, Drew Brees defended Zach Streif and had some interesting things to say about his day on the field against number 99. Well, um, I mean, I could, you know, I could hear a lot of chatter uh, on the field, so um, it sounds like he's a pretty animated guy on game day. Um, there's no doubt he's a phenomenal player, you know, and I don't think anybody can block him <laughs> in this league. But uh, keep in mind, our, our right tackle didn't give up any sacks in this game. <laughs> so maybe the term right tackle is used. But our right tackle didn't give up any sacks last game. Now, is J.J. Watt going to get some hits on you? Yeah. But, you know, I like to think I'm going to be able to get the ball out in, before he gets me. I mean, that's part, of, that's part of me being a savvy veteran, you know. But, um, no, I mean, he's, he's a great player. And he's going to – he obviously had a big game against us. Well, that will about do it for today. We'll see you Monday when we'll wrap up Sunday's events in the Dome. Enjoy the game, y'all. See you.